，幺幺领先，哈哈哈哈，牛逼吧！我直接坐后排了，很强啊！穿肚子啦！ This is China Observer. I'm Daniel Hall. Recently, a video went viral online. A BYD car owner used the auto parking system to park by the roadside. After getting out of the car, the car kept moving forward. The driver quickly jumped back in. Despite pressing the brake pedal continuously, the car didn't slow down. Instead, it accelerated to 80 miles per hour. In a panic, the driver swerved to avoid people and crashed into a parked car, preventing a bigger accident. One netizen commented, "I thought autopilot means you don't need." To hold the steering wheel while driving, turns out it means the car keeps running even after you get out. This autopilot is really advanced. A Huawei Ito M7 owner found that the smart driving system couldn't tell left from right. They tested it twice, and both times it had the same problem. I now strongly suspect my Wenjie M7 smart driving package is fake. They say it will learn and improve over time, but it doesn't. Instead, it gets worse. When slowing down on a sidewalk, it's fine, but on a big road, it shouldn't be a problem. I was turning left, but it went right. Isn't that reckless lane changing? On this road, it should have entered the left turn lane earlier. Brother, I am turning left. Why are you going right? You can't tell left from right. How am I supposed to drive? This is a left turn. You're in the right turn lane. He wasn't satisfied and tested it again. The smart driving system still operated the same way. Huawei's smart driving is often praised as leading the field, but now it can't even tell left from right. What kind of smart system is this? It's more like a stupid system. In China, most self-driving systems on electric cars are at level three. They can fully automate driving on normal roads, but in emergencies, human intervention is still needed. But many new energy car companies are using smart driving systems as a selling point, often with false advertising that misleads consumers. Huawei's Ito M7 boasts the Huawei ADS 2.0 high-level intelligent driving system. It claims to achieve high-speed and urban advanced intelligent driving without relying on high-definition maps, reaching level four or full self-driving capacity. Huawei CEO Richard Yu even said at a launch event that Huawei's autonomous driving technology is comparable to a 10-year experienced driver and has outpaced. Tesla in tests. He claimed Huawei's technology leads far ahead of domestic competitors, but according to consumer feedback, it's hard to say if the technology is really leading. Various accidents frequently occur when using smart driving features. One young man in a video said he crashed into a guardrail while using the advanced smart driving features on his newly purchased Huawei Ito S7 on May 6th. He showed the situation at the time. At 15 minutes and 37 seconds, the smart drive turned the steering wheel and the car moved right. Watch closely. This is key. At 15 minutes 38 seconds and 400 milliseconds, the smart drive showed a big red hand and exited, telling me to take over. What does it mean to ask me to take over at this moment? We're about to hit the guardrail. Do I have a choice? What else can I do but brake? I don't understand why the smart drive moved towards the guardrail. Can't it detect the guardrail? The two lanes ahead are clear. Even stopping would be better than hitting the guardrail. The owner said he had been communicating with the dealership since the accident, seeking a reasonable explanation. But the conclusion was that he didn't take over control in time, causing the accident. Not only does the smart driving system often malfunction, but Huawei's in-car system also frequently crashes. On June 5th, a woman from Jinhua, Zhejiang, posted a video on TikTok saying her brand new car, which cost close to $39,000, suddenly crashed on the road. On May 14th, I was driving in the city. I wasn't using the intelligent driving system, just driving myself. When driving normally, the steering wheel suddenly shook twice. Then the car froze and wouldn't move. The steering wheel wouldn't turn. The brakes didn't work, and pressing the gas pedal did nothing. Six or seven yellow lights started flashing. After contacting customer service, they told me to restart the car. But even after restarting, the car still wouldn't respond. 
They said they would replace some parts, meaning they would repair it. As a customer, I just bought the car and have only driven it for 940 kilometers, and this problem has already occurred. Their response is that they won't replace the car. I didn't ask for a refund, just a replacement with a car that doesn't have quality issues. On May 11th, an Ito M7 owner posted a video on TikTok stating that his car crashed into a truck while using the auto parking system in a parking lot. The car only alerted him after the collision. He said his five-month-old new car got a dent. He contacted the manufacturer immediately, but customer service replied that the parking assist sensor couldn't recognize special obstacles so it was his fault. The owner complained that if it can't recognize a big truck, how can it detect people? He expressed extreme disappointment with the Ito M7. But the user's videos were later deleted, and his profile showed this user is prohibited from posting. Netizens joked that the problem wasn't solved, but the user was. Huawei's handling of the situation mirrors the Chinese government's approach to similar unpleasant issues. Delete posts, silence users, and if necessary, detain or sue them. Publishing negative news about car companies on Chinese social media is risky. Recently, BYD sued auto blogger Yao18, demanding a public apology and $690,000 in damages. The issue began last November when Yao tested the fuel consumption of BYD's new car, the Fengcheng Bao Leopard 5, soon after its release. He found it consumed 18 liters per 100 kilometers, far exceeding the official 7.8 to 8.95 liters. He claimed he drove within speed limits. With about 1.4 million followers on TikTok, his video sparked widespread discussion and affected the car's sales. Six months later, BYD sued Yao, claiming $690,000 in damages. They said his dashcam footage showed abnormal driving, including speeding and rapid acceleration, causing high fuel consumption. BYD accused Yao of falsehoods, damaging the Leopard 5's reputation. Yao quickly responded, denying abnormal driving and any responsibility that would rule him for dangerous driving. Netizens questioned why he didn't receive a speeding ticket if he was speeding on China's heavily monitored highways. Since when did traffic departments need car companies to provide dash cam evidence for speeding? Yao said he would actively defend himself and countersue BYD for infringing his privacy by accessing his driving data. Some commentators see this as the first case of a car owner suing a car company for event data recorder infringement in China, with significant implications. We'll see how it turns out. BYD, as a leading electric car company in China, is no stranger to scandals and frequent accidents. Recently in Chongqing, a white BYD lost control and crashed into a roadside greenbelt, breaking a barrier. A green barrier rod pierced through the driver's cabin, creating a dangerous scene. Luckily, the driver was not injured. He kept shouting that the brakes had failed. This happened in a BYD ride-hailing car. Oh my, how are you driving? The brakes failed. It's terrifying. Also in Chongqing, a new BYD Song suffered brake failure, causing a four-car pileup. The driver kept saying the brakes didn't work. This was his brand new car and he didn't expect such a problem. Brake failure has long been a big issue with BYD cars. On social media, complaints about BYD, DMI losing power, and brake failure are common. Many owners report that brake failure is often accompanied by other issues like the car not starting, doors not unlocking, and gear shifting problems, suggesting possible electronic system faults. This raises safety concerns among consumers, not to mention the frequent spontaneous combustion incidents. When buying traditional fuel cars, the focus is on the big three parts, the engine, transmission, and chassis. 
in the electric car era, the focus shifts to the three electrics, the battery, motor, and electronic control. Doing well in these areas wins consumer trust. But amid fierce competition in China's new energy vehicle market, car companies are now more focused on new features like refrigerators, TVs, and large sofas instead of the essential three electrics. Many commentators believe that Chinese car companies are focusing on superficial comforts rather than component quality, driving safety, and core issues like electric car fires. This represents a technological regression with China's new energy vehicle development veering off course. Recently, a Li Auto Electric car crashed into a truck on the highway at 65 miles per hour. The video shows severe damage. The A pillar was destroyed and a whole beam on the body was deformed. All pillars and doors were bent and the car was totaled. But the airbags did deploy. The refrigerator, TV, and big sofa inside remained intact. People wondered if the airbags are designed to protect these features rather than the driver. And without the driver, what good are the features? Li Auto pioneered the focus on the big three features in electric cars, refrigerators, TVs, and big sofas. Starting with the TV, the Li One made the passenger screen essential. Now Mercedes, Porsche, and Ferrari offer it as an option. The Li L9 added a rear screen, followed by models like the Xpeng X9, Huawei Aito M9, and GAC Trumpchi A9. The new BMW 5 Series in China offers a 31-inch rear screen, not available elsewhere. The big sofa trend includes ventilated and heated seats, massage functions, queen seats, and zero-gravity seats. Even traditional fuel cars are adopting these features due to competition. Car refrigerators are becoming standard in models like the Li L9, Xpeng X9, and Denza D9. Some car companies are now adding toilets. G Can Auto, originally a robot vacuum company, plans to introduce this feature. Founder Chang Jing joked about adding a shower system. The onboard toilet is not a joke. We were really developing it. In April, we had the first demo version, but we found it only suited children. It was uncomfortable for women, so we made improvements. We hope to showcase it at the Chengdu Auto Show in August. We're also working on a car fridge and a car shower. These accessories will be available in our store soon. Netizens commented on the absurdity of electric cars exploding with scattered parts like toilets and showers. Despite the focus on the big three, Li Auto faces quality issues with critical components. Common problems include broken axles and falling wheels. On May 25th, a woman in Xingtai, Hebei, reported that her new Li Auto car, less than a month old, broke its axle after hitting a small stone. The video shows the front wheel tilted, the tire burst, and the axle broken. Guys, we broke another axle. Yesterday, a driver was turning around and brushed against the van's left front door. This caused the whole rear bumper to collapse and absorb the impact. The rear axle broke and the tire flew off. Some say this is normal because many car manufacturers design for wheel sacrifice to protect lives. This is to prevent the tire from invading the cabin and harming passengers and the driver during a crash. So this design must also be for wheel sacrifice. But the A and B pillars of the car also broke. Is that also to protect passengers? On May 29th, a Li L9 owner reported a broken rear suspension arm after a minor collision at 10 miles per hour in an underground garage. The wheel fell off, raising concerns about material or design flaws. The driver questioned how such a low speed could break the rear wheel. The Li Auto L9 is the company's second model priced at $65,000. It's touted as the cheapest large SUV you can buy for under a million yuan. But during its pre-sale in 2022, it faced axle issues. Less than a month before its official delivery, a Li L9 had an accident during a test drive at a dealership. The left front wheel collapsed into the car body, likely due to a broken suspension. The Li L9 features an air suspension used in luxury vehicles, which was a major selling point at its launch. 
Li Auto quickly responded, saying the test car hit a 8-inch deep pothole at 55 miles per hour, damaging the internal buffer ring of the air spring. They claimed some test cars use prototype buffer rings due to supply issues, which failed under heavy impact. Industry experts doubted this explanation, noting that driving over an 8-inch pothole at 55 miles per hour is unrealistic. Even if it happened, the suspension shouldn't be the only part affected. The tires should also show significant wear. According to comparisons by ACE Alliance on Chinese social media, the Li L9's suspension design closely mimics that of the BMW X5, but the Li L9 lacks certain adjustments found in the original BMW model, suggesting extreme cost-cutting measures. The supplier lists for the Li L9's air springs include German's Vibac, used by Rolls-Royce, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz, along with two Chinese manufacturers, Baolong Technology and Konghui Technology, as cheaper alternatives. This results in inconsistent hardware quality for the same model and consumers, indicating significant cost-saving efforts. In recent years, China's electric vehicle industry has experienced rapid growth, heavily supported by the Chinese government. Compared to the complex development of fuel cars with engines, transmissions, and chassis, making electric cars is easier. Key components like batteries, motors, and electronic control systems are sourced from suppliers, making car manufacturing relatively straightforward. Many of China's so-called new car companies claim to develop their designs, but they often use reverse engineering. They modify existing platforms and design parameters to create new models. This approach, essentially copying others' products, is an industry norm. For example, the Xiaomi SU7, recently popularized, is mocked as the Miche for copying Porsche's design. The Li-1, claimed to be independently developed, was found to have suspension and chassis parts reverse-engineered from Toyota's K platform. The 2021 Li-1 also shared many identical parts with the Highlander. China's rapid electric vehicle development is linked to this low-cost reverse-engineering approach. But these patchwork technologies lead to safety and compatibility issues causing frequent malfunctions in Chinese electric cars. Thank you.